Hello Capricorns and Moon and Rising. Welcome to Radiant Moon Tarot. My name is Victoria. We are having a look at June 2024 money and career for you guys. If you're new to my channel, hello and welcome to you. If you're returning, welcome back. I'm always grateful for your likes, share, subscribes, your fantastic energy, all of your interaction helps my channel grow and I thank you very, very much. So let's get right into June. Um, for the first, uh, for the first uh, two thirds of June, we're still in Gemini season. So you may find that communication is a little bit easier. You might have um, an easier time making some decisions and you could put some big ideas into motion here. Um, you might find that you're a little bit more social. So you might be doing some more social networking. This can perhaps lead you to um, job offers and, you know, to opportunities to make more money. Who doesn't need that? And then we head into uh, Cancerian season with the summer solstice in here as well. A time of growth, a time of perhaps clarity, right? And, uh, you know, the summer, if you're in the norm, if you're in the northern hemisphere, right? The summer is a time when we often try and take a vacation. The sun is out. We're feeling a little bit more optimistic. So some good vibes all around. If you're in the southern hemisphere, you've got winter season, right? Now I'm a winter baby. So I love winter. I would love to have two winters a year. That would be awesome for me. Um, so hopefully you are enjoying yourselves down there in the winter wonderland and you might find that this is a cozier time for you where you're spending a little bit more time inside or with the with your loved ones, right? The people that you love or it could be some indoor activities could actually help to make you some money. We have attachment coming in here for you guys. First, we want to get rid of this. All right. The attachment energy is a card five. Fives, as we know, do tend to bring forward some challenges and some obstacles that we need to deal with. And part of this one here is attachment, attachment to an outcome, attachment to micromanaging every little minute of every single day. We can have positive attachments to things, but then we can also hold on to something for a little bit too long. Fives also represent exciting opportunities to change. So this is a darker energy here with this one. And so this is inviting you to have a look. What have you been holding on to? Are the things that you've been holding on to, are they working for you? Do you have like a false sense of hope? right? So this can be an investment that maybe it's just been languishing there. Maybe it's had a couple little ups and downs. Maybe it's lost some money. Is it time to pull your money and put it somewhere else, right? Are you attached really to that, um, to that investment and why, right? Because our money needs to work for us rather than us work so hard for our money. This can be a job, right? You know, we all need a job. It's the way that our material world works, right? We typically make money by having a job, but quite often what happens is we don't always let go of a certain situation when we should. And it's not like it was 30 years ago, you know, where someone started in a job, they started with a company and they stayed there for the next 25 years and they retired with that company with a pension. Ha! Huh. Good luck getting that now, right? It does exist, but it's a little bit more few and far between. So what happens sometimes is we tend to nest in these jobs. And these days, quite often, the way to make more money is to actually go for a different job in a different company. Um, this is also about a different position as well, right? So if you're in this energy where you're feeling um, stuck or trapped or, you know, you're like, I think I've hit the proverbial glass ceiling or maybe you go to work every day and you're just like, this isn't floating my boat. Why are you still there? So this is a really thought provoking energy here for you. What are you attached to that's not giving you anything back for your uh, commitment, we'll call it, okay? But this is also a reminder here to not micromanage the universe, to allow things to happen, to look at the big picture, to not be so focused on one task that you miss other opportunities, right? And sometimes we do get so focused that we don't see that anything could be a little bit different or could be a little better. So big reminder for you guys. We have the door to romance opening up for you here, okay? It is card number 33. Now, 33 is um, a master teacher number. And threes are related 
to creation related to the Empress card, right? So this can be a very creative time. And this is a time when you might be really inclined to follow your passions, your goals, your dreams. What does your heart want? Very heart-centered energy. Um, this is also about receiving right? Receive, open your heart, see the potential and see the possibilities. Do what you love and love what you do. Sometimes we hold on to a job just for the paycheck. And there's something hold us, holding us back, usually an element of fear, because maybe there's something that you'd rather be doing. And but you're like, I don't know if it's going to pay me what I need to be paid, right? And so that kind of holds us back a little bit, right? But the doors are opening for you to do what you love, to follow your passion, to create something magical. Do things happen overnight? No, not necessarily, right? But if we're open to a positive outcome, growth, um, then a little bit of magic can be in the air for you guys. Now, yes, the door of romance can represent that there's something opening up here that can really speak to your heart, that can really make you happy and joyous. This can be invitations, this can be job offers, this can be a better company, a better department. This can be where all kinds of wonderful things are happening in the air for you. It can be a time to make some move or a time of growth. But the door to romance can also indicate that personal relationships may be affecting your money. And with this particular card, this is super positive. So if you are in a romantic relationship, right, maybe now is the time when you're considering marriage or moving in together or something, you may blend your finances together. And all of a sudden, even though you're not necessarily making more money, you all of a sudden have more money, right? Because you're not the only person footing all of your bills right now. You're um, dividing up the responsibilities, hopefully, right? So a personal relationship can certainly um, be impacting your money. And this is the upright. Right, is super positive card, so this does represent some positive things. Some of you could be perhaps um, forking out some money with this too, okay? Um, door to romance can represent that an expansion of a personal relationship here can represent that maybe you're planning a wedding or a honeymoon, that kind of thing, so you're going to be probably spending a little bit of money, um, but it's for a good cause and it's something that just puts a smile on your face, right? Because our money reading is not just about money coming in, it's also about how we spend it and how we put it back out there. But it's a beautiful energy, whatever your situation happens to be, can unlock new things in your life and things that are in alignment with the things that bring you pleasure and joy and the things that make you feel fulfilled. We have happy family here as well. Uh, card number four, fours do bring about stability and security, a good, strong, solid foundation. And the happy family card is very similar to like the 10 of cups. Brings in unlimited possibilities, unlimited potential, happy home, happy family. Um, in So some of you, you are very focused on your home and family. Maybe you've got some really good news and you're going to start a family or blend families together. And again, this is where your money can kind of come into play here with this, right? You might actually have find yourself in some ways having more of it. Perhaps you are, you know, you really have your family's happiness and joy at the forefront of anything that you do in regards to your money or even your career moves. And so this is maybe why you are attached to some things um, that aren't maybe giving you what it is that you're looking for. It's like you try and try and try. And maybe now is the time for change. Um, because those doors are open for you now. The happy family card can also represent help and support coming from your family. So um, this can be a wonderful energy. There could be some gifts flowing your way. Uh, it can be so, um, certainly possible. But with that rainbow on that card, happiness, joy, good times, fun times, going on a family vacation. Um, perhaps some of you are... Um, uh, moving to a new neighborhood, buying a new house, that kind of thing, starting a family or expanding your family as well. And of course, all these things do impact your finances in some way, but it looks like here in a very positive way. But we do need to let go of something with that attachment card. So really have a look and see what do I need to release? right? What's holding me back? What do I need to change? Because their opportunity for change and growth is here right now. We've got the judgment card. What do you need to let go of? Wow. Okay. Right there. All right. We have the tower in reverse. We've got the hermit. Wow. This is big energy. 
here for you, Capricorn. Oh, haha, ha, I'm not finished pulling cards, but I did just happen to look at the back of the deck. We've got the Ten of Cups. So uh, happy, happy, joy, joy all around. And this is an underlying influence and also a confirmation. And the Ten of Cups, happy home, happy family, adding to your family, blending families together, getting married, getting engaged, falling in love, um, loving your job, loving what where you live, all of this stuff, right? So all kinds of unlimited potential here. But we've got big energy here for you, Capricorn. The judgment card, you're seeing the light, right? You're maybe it's a call to action. All right. The judgment card is where, you know, we are being called to do something different or to make an important decision. The judgment card can be also where we get clarity on things where we've maybe been feeling in the dark or we've been feeling a little bit of darker energy. This is where we can see the light at the end of the tunnel, but it's up to us to make a decision. Do I stay where I am right now? Is it time to let go? Can I fix the situation and give it another chance? Do I need to do something differently? Once, once we are clear on what we want and how we want to move forward, this helps us to release, right, and experience growth and forward momentum. So this can be a very important energy here for you to do a little bit of reflection, a little bit of examination, and ultimately to make an important decision because we've got to go through this energy of judgment before we actually wrap up and complete a cycle. So are you done with your situation? Is your investment hit the glass ceiling? Is there any more progress available in your job? Any ability to make more money? If not, you're looking for change right? So the judgment card can bring something back into our life as well. So if you feel as though you've missed an opportunity, this can be where you may actually get a second chance at something. And this can be, you know, maybe you missed out on a promotion, right? And this can be where something comes back around again, because maybe they chose like the golden child of the group rather than the person you who is the most qualified and capable, right? Because we all know that sometimes in companies when they're, uh, you know, um, moving people around when someone leaves, they're not always choosing the right person for the job, right? Sometimes they're choosing the person that, you know, sucks up to them and things like that, right? So they don't always just look at skill and ability. And we all know there's a lot of people in positions that probably shouldn't be there. So you could potentially get a second chance at something here. Okay. Or you could be realizing that maybe yes, a door has been slammed in your face. Maybe you feel as though you had gone for something, you had put yourself out there and the answer back was no. And you've been kind of in a little bit of regret um, since then, but there could be a door open for something better, maybe something along similar lines, but something that's actually better. So a door is opening for you again. Are you going to step through it or are you going to be held back, right? Um, are you going to live in an energy of regret or are you going to move forward with clarity and a sense of purpose and trusting in your journey and knowing that there's something better for you out there? Whatever your ha situation happens to be with the tower in reverse, this can represent a couple of different things. Normally, the tower in the upright is sudden, unexpected change. We get an epiphany. We get a revelation. We stumble across a key piece of information that makes our blood boil. Um, this is where we've got things crashing down around us or we feel as though um, we need to let something go. And we know we've been holding on to something too tight, right? But it feels like things are out of control. And it's because there's this shedding, this releasing, right? And we're left with a foundation, but it's replacing it with something new. So in this energy, there could be some changes that are going on for you, but they're not as much as of a surprise as what you think they are. It's like, I know this is coming. I know this is happening, or I know that I need to do this. The tower in reverse can represent you making change and you're the mastermind of your own tower moment. You're not waiting for things to come crashing down around you. You're not waiting for um, forever for something to happen. You're taking charge of something. And this is more like a controlled release of whatever has been holding you back, right? Whatever you're clinging on to. So this is like a cleansing energy and it is making room for something better. But I feel like here in this energy, you're taking your time, but you're not doing nothing, right? The judgment card, you're connecting with yourself, right? You're maybe asking some questions. You're getting clarity. You're seeing what is hidden, right? In this energy, you're releasing 
energies or feelings or thoughts that are just not working, right? That tower card, right? is releasing things that have been stagnant and stuck because the tower in reverse can represent that you are resistant to change. Okay. Um, a little bit stubborn. Okay. A little bit of stubborn energy there for you. Shocking. Right. Um, but you could be resistant to change and resistance is futile. Of course, the more we resist change, uh, the harder it is. And in this energy, instead of really, instead of resisting it, you're maybe going to recognize judgment card that you got to go with the flow and you've got to roll with the punches and make some sort of change. Right. So in this energy here, you could be very much in control of changes that you are making for your um, betterment for your, you know, for your better tomorrow, a better future. So, um, but there could be a little bit of a surprise coming in here for you. And instead of it being scary, tower and the upright can be scary, right? It's more like, yeah, I kind of knew or I kind of know that this is going to happen. And you're comfortable, a little bit more comfortable with it than you normally would be. All right. But some of you may have an opportunity here to fix a situation to get something back on track, whether it's your investments or your job or your just your state of affairs with your finances, whatever it happens to be. Others of you, there's like more of a little bit of a planned change that's going on here. But whatever it is, you're like the you're in control of it. Right. But we do have the hermit card here as well. Now, the hermit card is uh, Virgo energy. All right. And with this, this does come with an energy of reflection and soul searching. What do I really want? If I had a wish, what would my wish be? So you could be really in this energy of manifestation, of setting intentions, of setting goals. Right. And with the tower in reverse, you could potentially either be feeling um, a little bit stuck, a little bit uncertain where to start. Um, or even what you want, but you could also um, be in this energy a little more patient than what you normally are because the tower is ruled by Mars and Mars is that fighter energy, that go-getter energy, right? That angry energy sometimes, right? But it is energy. So in the reverse, it can be like a pause right before the action, or it can just be a little bit more of a controlled approach at things and a little bit more patience and the hermit can bring you patience as well. But it also does bring healing. So your ability to make better choices or to have a better tomorrow, whether by something new or whether repairing something, it's better times ahead. But the hermit also does represent a um, solitary energy as well. So there could be something here where, you know, your personal life again is changing. And instead of, um, you know, being single or solo, being living alone or having a single um, paycheck coming in, this is where you could have two paychecks coming in. You could have some changes there, but it's like you kind of know that it's coming and you're navigating those changes in a more pleasant kind of way. The hermit does represent that maybe you are taking a step back from your situation situation and saying, okay, what am I stuck on? What do I want to change? What do I need to embrace to bring me more money and a better career path, whatever that looks like? Some of you could be perhaps um, following a um, healing journey. You could be you could be called to have a change in career and your soul's purpose. Your calling is to help other people in some way. Um, this can be helping children. You have two uh, two cards here that represents family and both um, have children on them. So maybe part of your calling here is to do something with children. Uh, you could have some spiritual gifts that maybe can bring you in a little bit more money. Um, and you're taking your time and trying to figure out, okay, how does this work? Um, you could also be like a physical healer, right? Because that hermit does bring in that healing element and the hermit is Virgo energy. You could actually be working with a Virgo person perhaps. Um, but Virgo is also your sixth house in astrology, which is about your daily habits, your work, your routines, your health, your happiness, your well being. And so this can be what you're working on. And this can also be your, your purpose to help other people as well. We have the Four of Wands. There's your celebration, the King of Cups. And we have the Seven of Pentacles, bringing in patience, but also something coming to fruition. I was also going to say with the Hermit card, um, Hermit being Virgo energy. Uh, uh, Virgos, my sister is a Virgo, and um, 
you know, a uh, little bit similar to Capricorn, right? In the fact, you know, earth energy, right? Um, but Virgo tends to strive for perfection, okay? And so this can be where, you know, in this energy here where we're, we want perfection, but we're recognizing the tower there that sometimes there's a lot of positive things that come from a little bit of chaos, right? We want things to be smooth sailing. We want things to go exactly according to plan, right? But it doesn't always work out that way. So sometimes we need to recognize that beauty that can come from imperfection, right? So if you are the kind of person where, yes, you're, you're goal driven, you're determined, right? But if you're stuck on something because you're waiting for perfect, right? Trust in a little bit of chaos. Because when the dust settles, then that's when we figure out some interesting things. All right. But we do have the four of wands here. So the four of wands can certainly represent your wishes and your goals and your dreams. You've gotten yourself to a certain level. And it's a cause for celebration. It is known as the 1111 card. But the four of wands um, is known for accomplishment. It's um, your halfway to marriage card, right? So a higher level of engagement. This is um, very social energy celebrations, right? So again, you could be planning some sort of celebration, whether it's like a family reunion, um, birthdays, uh, someone in your family may have an upcoming birthday. Um, there could be something that you're planning for Virgo season, right? And Virgo season comes in in the latter part of August into the, into, uh, the first part of September. So there could be something lining up very positive for you during that time frame. Remember when we do these readings, the energy is activating, but with all this big energy, it may take some of you a, a couple of months to play out, right? So something really wonderful could be happening around Virgo season. And maybe that's when you're planning that family vacation. Maybe that's when you move in with somebody. Maybe that's when you buy a new house, right? Or you've just got some sort of social aspect going on and it's super, super positive for you there. Um, this can be about you getting out there and doing some business networking as well, right? Super positive energy. Everyone's having a good time. We're talking, we're connecting with people and you just never know who you might connect with because you could connect with King of Cups, someone really wonderful. And the King of Cups can be a person who can help you out. It can be a new person entering your life, a new friend, a new business um, colleague. It can be a new boss, someone who's like, hey, they're a little nicer than maybe your old one, um, that kind of thing, right? But they're a very positive influence, maybe someone who's very creative um, in their energy and very caring and very warm and very generous and all that kind of stuff. So it's going to be someone new that you meet or someone that you could be talking to um, about your money. Maybe they give you a little bit of help in some way. However, yes, the King of Cups can also represent um, who you are connecting with on a higher level, a higher level of commitment with this person. So marriages, engagements, um, promotions and raises as well, higher level of commitment, okay, and something that brings you happiness, because the kings are leaders, so you could be stepping into a leadership role, maybe you're even finding some success with something that you have been creating, right, that king is like, I've got this, I'm in charge, I'm taking the lead, um, and I'm feeling really good about what I'm creating in the life that I'm creating, right, and the four of wands can bring about celebration, success, and abundance into your life as well, feeling like you've got your feet on the ground and that you're building a good, strong, solid foundation. So it's a really wonderful energy and this is a great vibe for you to be in. So whether you've got a personal relationship developing in a positive way, you might be meeting those new people, those new connections, or you're just feeling as though you're kind of at the top of your game and you're making wise choices, the kings are successful energy. So this is awesome. It's also about letting your intuition lead the way as well. It's like you're trusting your intuition, you're trusting your instincts, you know when to hold them, you know when to fold them. And it's especially important when we do have the seven of pentacles. Now this can be an energy where something you've planted, right, we plant a seed, right, is coming to fruition. So something is blossoming for you um, in the month of June. And so this can be where your investment pays you some dividends, right? Or there's an, a, an opportunity here to maybe cash out, right? So you might have an important decision to make with your money um, because there can be this growth, right? This represents some growth, right? And so do I let it ride, right? Or do I pull my money and put it somewhere else? We have to look back at that attachment card and we have to look back at the judgment card right? The hermit, trust your intuition, trust your instincts, the king of cups, 
do what feels right, right? Don't let something ride just because an investment has paid you so far doesn't mean necessarily that it will continue to do so. So make sure you have a different plan, a different strategy, a different approach um, in mind or in place or be willing to entertain that. Right. And when we have the seven of pentacles, yes, something can be blossoming. We can be getting some money, rewards, dividends, bonus raises, promotions, a bigger bank account. Right. All of that kind of wonderful stuff. But there can also be this element of, hmm, where am I now? What does my money look like? Is am I on the right track? Do I feel like there's still more room for growth? Or do I need to take a different approach? Do I need to cut my cut and run right with this energy? This is also one of being patient. So sometimes we do need to get be patient to get to where we need to go. But there is this assessment energy that comes in with the seven of pentacles. So you might have an important choice to make. Right. But again, we've got, you know, a couple cards here really, really indicating clarity um, and your intuition, right? Your instincts are really going to help you out to make these decisions, right? And, you know, if you're not sure, King of Cups, maybe there's someone that can help you or, you know, because they are very creative, so they don't just necessarily get caught up on the details, right? And so this can be someone who might have some different insights just because their brain is wired a little bit differently, right? So they can help you out in some way. This can also be where creative endeavor starts to pay off and you could be experiencing some growth there. We have the seven of wands here for you, the ace of cups, and the four of pentacles. All right. So <laughs> very nice energy. Uh, the ace of cups, of course, this can represent new opportunities, new things manifesting in your world, right? Gifts coming in. This also represents an element of calm, of peace, of forgiveness, of healing. Um, but it is can also be like a fresh start or the next stage of development there. So some of you, um, are really embarking on something new, could be pulling your money out, seven of pentacles from an existing uh, investment or something that you've, you know, held on to for a while in the ace of cups, I'm going to do something new. I'm going to do something that, um, you know, is a little bit different. And maybe something that can, uh, you know, has more opportunity for growth or something that grows a little bit faster, right? As far as timing goes, the cups, the water energy would be a little bit faster than the pentacles energy. It was very slow, right? Um, but this can also be you following your heart, your goals, your dreams, doing what you love, loving what you do. You could have an opportunity here again to fix situations around you, fix your bank account, fix your workplace, something there, right? Maybe someone leaves and you're all like, woohoo, let's have a party, four of wands. And then a new boss or something comes in or a new coworker and you're like, oh my goodness, you're so much better than the last person that was here. And so this could be that new person has a really positive impact on whether you stay or you go, right? And, you know, helps you make those decisions. But whatever it is for you, the Ace of Cups can be a gift, can be a new job, it can be some money, it can be something happy going on in your personal relationships or your home, it can be something that you manifested and it can also be the seed of something new, so something that has great potential. But we do have the seven of wands here for you as well and I love the seven of wands and especially out of this deck because if we look at the imagery, right, she is sitting in the yoga position, her solar plexus is very much active right there, she's feeling confident, she's feeling good and she's not letting anything derail her from her goals and her dreams and she's not letting anything get her down right so this can be an energy where you really are in a position of strength this is where you're feeling more confident about the future um and this is also where you're rising above any issues right so again you can just maintain this positive outlook this positive attitude right and you're just going to overcome anything that is, you know, it, that is uh, causing you a little bit of grief or any kind of challenges there, right? It's like, nope, I'm rising above this. It's also about letting yourself be seen. Your opportunity and your ability here to rise above the competition, right? And that seven of wands, you've got all these people up here, uh, down here clambering for, you know, for what you are going for, for what you have. And then there she is. She's like, 
I'm good. I've got it. I'm feeling confident. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling fine. I'm feeling optimistic. And so this can be where, you know, you could be very much at the top of your game. Um, and if you do put yourself out there for interviews or anything like that, the spotlight is a little bit on you with this one. Your confidence shines through. You bring something a little bit different to the table than other people do. And you could very well beat out the competition. And then there's this new with the Ace of Cups. Right. So don't forget, there is this element of patience that is coming in as well. And yes, sometimes we um, want everything to happen here. And now sometimes we're so desperate to get out of a situation that, you know, we um, sometimes feel the urge just to take the first opportunity that comes our way. But we really do need to um, look at the details, assess seven of pentacles and figure out, is this really for me? Right. Um, if I take this, where do I see this going? Right. Ask questions, dive into some details, anything that's truly meant for you. They will give you 24, 48 hours to mull it over or to do some fact checks or whatever, that kind of thing. Right. And the decision is up to you. Remember, a big decision here for some of you with that judgment card. Was awesome energy there for you guys. But the Four of Pentacles here is a little bit of a reminder about discernment and about patience and about staying open. With the Four of Pentacles, we do trust in the foundation that we've built, right? And you've got three fours coming out here. You've got Four of Pentacles, you've got the Four of Wands, um, and you've got the Happy Family card, which is also number four. So having a stability and security is likely very important for you. And this is probably something that you can achieve or feel better about in the month of June. It's like things are settling down. Um, you feel like you're on the right track or you could actually have that thing coming to fruition for you. That's like, Phew. that's a sigh of relief. This is awesome. So this sense of stability and security is um, very prevalent in your reading. Um, and especially as far as your home and your career path goes, which is good. The four of pentacles does show that, you know, you have your all of your needs are met, but that does require trust to know that there's more abundance coming your way. All right. But the four of pentacles can represent this energy of needing to be a little bit wise and discerning with your money. You're not making rash decisions with this one. And same thing with that seven of pentacles. So as far as your bank account, your investments go, right, it's more of um, a little bit of caution and a little bit more um I'm, I need to look at the details here. I need to figure this out, right? Do I want to spend the money on this thing? Can I afford to spend the money on this thing? Um, how do I put some more money away for the future? Uh, that kind of thing, right? So in this energy, you're not being wild and crazy with your money. You're looking how to keep more of it, right, in this. So just be a little bit aware of that, um, that, you know, there may be some things that you do want at this time. Um, and... This looks like it's about, you know, either maybe getting a little bit of help. You might get a little surprise along the way to help you get what you want. But you're also just being a little bit cautious with your money there. Beware of being closed off because the four of pentacles is known as the miser card. OK, and this is where we are very, cl very closed off a little bit, sometimes a little bit protective, protective of what money um, money our values. Right. Those kind of things. So the things that we value as well. And when we hold on too tight, we do tend to block the flow of energy. All right. So no one to hold him again. No one to hold him. No one to fold him. No one to open the purse strings. No one to put some money away for a rainy day. No when it's a good idea and a good investment um, or money well spent to dip in your bank account. And no when to kind of be like, you know what? I really want this thing. Yes, I maybe got the money for it. But you know what? I think I'm just going to wait a little bit because you just never know something that you really want. Um, might actually go on sale or something like that in the future. So just be a little bit aware of this four of pentacles, discernment, discernment, discernment. Okay. Um, but overall, you've got some very interesting and very wonderful energy coming in here. And I especially do like the ace of cups. So I think the first couple of weeks are going to be very contemplative. They're going to be filled with some decisions and maybe some insights about the future, um, making some plans. And then we get into executing the plans and all of that kind of stuff. So, but anything kind of goes with the tower energy is a little bit of faded energy coming in here. So, uh, you know, some things are going to unfold for you guys at different, um, 
at different points. And for some of you, maybe by between now and Virgo season, right? So between now and August, so summer, right? Summer, a time of growth and expansion and hopefully some wonderful energy. So I'm going to leave all that there for you guys. I hope it was something here for you. If so, please do give me that thumbs up on this video. It lets me know you resonate with the reading. It lets YouTube know the same thing. So any interaction you do with the channel does help it grow. So I thank you very much for that. And don't be afraid to say hello. What's going on um, in your world? What are you planning? And are you planning a wedding or an anniversary party or something like that? Because it looks like a good time. Anyways, thanks guys. I hope you have a wonderful month and I'll see you later. Bye.